just quickly confirm what my own device here. The advantages of being in the age that we are in is you have the world right on your fingertips. All right. All right, I'd like to believe uh, live. All right, hello there, welcome. I would like to believe we are live. I'm just waiting to see myself on the screen. All right, yeah. I was careful to make sure that I spell that name right. Welcome to 2.30 Conversations this afternoon. Uh, let's have a conversation about the alpha female modernism with Umam Trina Tanga. I hope I pronounced it right because technically I am Hossa, so I shouldn't struggle that much. So I'm going to quickly ask that we take this opportunity to commit ourselves to the throne of grace and ask for guidance and ask for safety and ask for understanding and interaction given, given moving forward. So with that being said, I'm, I'll ask us to just bow our heads as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are once again, another Sabbath day, another conversation, another opportunity to impact lives, another opportunity to sit at someone's feet and learn from their experiences, from their knowledge base and their skill set to learn and to draw concerning how can we channel and perfect this life or to prepare ourselves and handle this life that we are in. We thank you for the tools that you give us every now and then, people who have influenced, people who are blessed to share, and people who are willing and able and humble enough to say, here I am, Lord, please use me. So this day we ask that may we have a conversation around it, amicably being blessed and by you. Welcome to two better conversations. Grace, and bless us abundantly, Father. Uh, be with us in whichever location we may be, anywhere in this vast universe of the world where 5G can carry, where the intermittent, intermittent um, uh, communication signals can go. May you touch lives and may you speak to us. We pray, praying for the speaker that you may speak through her, touch his lips, bless her mind, that you may minister to us. We ask this with the heart of faith, knowing that you are faithful and you are good. Last and, and, and least, but not least, we pray for the ministry, that you sustain it, you bless it as you already have, Hold it in the palm of your hand. Um, lift it up to go to higher places. Help us to reach far ends of the earth to influence lives in a positive way, preparing people for the second coming of Christ and helping and equipping them to live according to the principles of the kingdom in this very earth. We are praying knowing that you'll grant us all of this. This, therefore, is our prayer with the heart of faith in the mighty and very majestic name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. At this point, I'm just going to quickly share the brief announcements that we have prepared for today. Welcome to 230 Conversations, everyone. A ministry, an independent, I could say, ministry that is aligned or that is under the umbrella of the Seventh day Adventist Church. Uh, by virtue of the people who are part of it, are members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but not limited to Seventh-day Adventists. It's a ministry that is uh, putting messages all across to touch all lives everywhere and to influence positively to give people the principles of how to live according to the kingdom of God. So at this point, today is another day, another conversation. We are going to have some heated moments. We're going to have some sharing moments, we're going to have some moments of awe, and may we be blessed as we pursue them. So at this point, I'm going to share our screen, uh, my screen, which is going to reveal what you see now on your screen there. And I'm saying, let's think, let's apply our thinking caps, all of us, during the process of this conversation. Let's talk and discuss, freely so, without being are afraid of being judged in any way. Uh, let's facilitate, uh, that's my job. And let's announce the good news. The good news of the gospel that liberates, that is able to give power, that is able to give people power now 
that is able to give people what they need now for those of who are afraid of war that is able to give people principles that can be able to, to teach them how to acquire wealth now so this is a message that we are talking to let's announce that all of it is possible as long as we stay at the feet of christ we ask for the grace of god and we ask him to bless us and to guide us so next slide i'm going to share quickly is going to speak to our platforms yeah? where can you find us you can find us in the following platforms we are available on youtube if you want to catch up at some point and if you are seeing this in 2023 you can still come back uh, the information will would have advanced i always say this when i'm doing my cryptocurrency um, sharing and whatnot that the information that we are sharing is accurate today uh, if you listen to it in, in years from now, it will be different. So it will be redundant. The information you are getting today will be redundant when you are looking for it at 2023. However, with this message, it's consistent. Every time we speak, the principles that we learned, our forefathers learned in the 80s are still the same and they still apply and they're still going to apply to our kids, 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 years and years from now. The dynamics of the application may change, there might be advancements, but however, the principle remains the same. So you'll find us on these platforms, Facebook, TikTok, yes, we are there. YouTube, Instagram, we are working on it. We are working on it, guys. Let's be honest. We are working on it. Who are we blessed with today? Umama, I checked in with her earlier on 25 or 30 minutes ago. Uh, she's ready for us to bless us with a conversation around, hmm, the alpha female. Yes. <laughs> All right. So we had a conversation about um, what was it? Uh, feminism. Not so long ago. Wafiku, my sister, was it Moyo? I think Miss Moyo. She deciphered and she just um, redefined a lot of stuff. And we took that conversation from an amicable point of view of what can we take with us that will build us. Not the conversations that we always have that actually where we critique each other, we nail each other down, and we judge each other as if we, we know. Dr. Mzamai always says this. You know, some of us behave like when we were in the shower, God whispered to us and he told us things that nobody else has heard. So let's shy away from that. We had a conversation about feminism from a point of view. Uh, how can we constructively move forward with this conversation. So today we are with Alpha Female. We are speaking about modernism and let's wait just briefly. We'll be having a conversation. From this point onwards, we are hopping on to religion and the world. Religion and the world. So this is just a brief, a brief overview of the month, the two months that are to follow. And this is what we'll be talking about. Second of April, the cost of religion, the cost of religion, politics and religion, racism and religion, hmm, sounds about it. Religion and LG, lays, lesbian, lays, uh, gay, gay, transgender, Q. You wanna lay? LGBT. I always struggle with that. And please, uh, if you are listening to this and you identify with that. Uh, do forgive me, I don't mean to discriminate in any way. And then 30th of April is religion and spiritualism. Religion and spiritualism. So this is the point where I say, or we say, what does the church say? Can I see some amens there on the chat? And this is how we market our products. Can I see some amens, some amens, some amens, some amens, many amens there. So we are going to have a conversation around religion and the world. Thank you for the amens, guys. I can see them. I can't see the amens, but I see the numbers are going up. Four, five, six. Thank you. So religion and the old and the world, we're going to have an open conversation about what that means. Uh, as it were, we know 230 has got a reputation for getting the relevant, not the best. Nobody's the best in this world. The relevant people for each and every topic based on the capacity. Uh, capability that is skill set and knowledge base. So the following month will be May, the money counter, the money counter. All of this is in an effort to be relevant to the Christian. Okay. 
Yeah. The Christian needs to be relevant. Christianity needs to be relevant. So the money encounter, we're talking about entrepreneurship, the practical guide, tithe and offering, mm -hmm. me, the church, and man. Black poverty, personal experience. All right? And then money and its classes. How broke are you not? <laughs> I want to let it sound like it was coined by Utah. It's one and nine. Money and its classes. How broke are you not? So we continue to appeal to the saints for airtime contributions. If you are feeling blessed and you are blessed and God has just showered you with blessings and you want to impact people's lives by having them part of the platform, please do get in touch with Uta as well as with Ashley so that you can bless us. And please note as well that we do have airtime and data fund for which God has blessed the ministry. And I would like to uh, recognize the Northern Conference for blessing the ministry with funds so that we could be able to make everything possible to pay for the platform that can uh, sustain us to be able to uh, pay for people's data as well. So we'd like to thank the Northern Conference for those blessings through Christ. And that, and that brings me to the end of our announcements. And I'm going to stop share now. And I'm going to quickly just prepare Omar to just take us on. And she's aware of, of what the 411 is going to be moving forward. So at this point, I'm going to pin a muscle that you can be the only person who appears and I'm going to ask to unmute you. Uh, in fact, let me make you a co-host. Please do pardon me. Let me make you a co-host so that you can do in, as you, as as in, as in, and when you 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 uh, be comfortable to do what you need to. I'm trying to find you. Uh, let me make you co-host. I've made you the co-host. Um, and then we just please unmute yourself, Mama. All right. Thank you. All right, so you're the only person who's pinned right now. Uh, run with us, take, take us through the conversation, and then I'll be right here if there's anything you need, questions or whatsoever, or anything you might want me to intervene on, uh, let me know. But as soon as you're done, I'll be taking over from there to facilitate so that I can just facilitate the discussion. Uh, if people want to comment, people want to ask questions, then I'll just be the go-to guy, basically. So over to you, Mama. I'll just close my video and then take us on, Mama. Is that about a minute? Thank you. Thank you, Buti. Uh, good afternoon, saints uh, all over the world. My name is Tuna Shetanga, uh, also known as Tindrin, which is the preferred uh, name because I believe that uh, you cannot be angry and still call me Tindrin uh, in, in the same breath. Um, my inspiration comes from empowering people by inspiring them to love themselves um, take care of themselves. And as a result, I am a self-love ambassador and coach with a psychology background. And I love to call myself a social scientist. And one of my experiences is in being a single mother. I am a mother of three. I have never been married. I know church people struggle with this. Mother of three, never married, because usually one would have been divorced or something else. Never married. I don't remember a time where I wished to be married. And um, I do suspect that in my 20s, I was afraid that I might end up getting married and so might have... Um, subconsciously influenced my life that I must just have children so that these men will be scared of me. And so I had two children, 18 months apart, they grew up as twins and the last born, uh, so the eldest is 27 and the other one is 26 and the last born is nine years old. The nine year old one, I consciously prayed for and asked for him because I was like, okay, now I'm in my 40s. I just want to have one last round in this department, God. And so I was blessed with a, a boy son. Coming to the topic, the alpha female, wow. 
Uh, it was interesting that I was asked to present this topic. And when I said yes, it was like, yeah, it's an easy topic. I can find information. And the more I researched, I was wondering why did they ask me to present on this? Firstly, the term itself is not really flatter. And uh, I, I, I suspect that initially very few women would like to be identified as alpha female. And I listened to Pastor Ketelo's presentation and it fits perfectly what I know of men. And when you go to research the background to the term, it started as a definition really to a male performance. Uh, it would be an alpha male, that kind, that, that kind of a man that was described by um, Pastor Ketelo in the presentation. If you have missed that, I really recommend that you go back and listen, because I will not go back to the definitions that he has already covered. Um, but I did look at what is the official definition of the alpha female. And modernism to me came, came across as just isimanje manje. And that is nowadays, how do we see an alpha female? What is it like to be an alpha female? The, but the official definitions I found was um, a, a, a woman who has embraced her leadership ambitions. She's talented, highly motivated, and self-confident. She's powerful and successful, often in a leadership role. Alpha females are often described as intimidating by men and women alike. And of course, uh, that's a subjective view. So, when, and I also found that there could be two types of alphanism. Yeah. Whether it's male or female, there's a, there's a toxic side and there's a healthy side, of course. The toxic side was covered extensively in Pastor Ketelo's presentation. But the two types, there's the unaware, non-adaptive um, alpha. These are usually bullies, often the reason for abusive power and dysfunction. And the other one is the aware and adaptive. And they, they tend to be women because of our natural instincts of being collaborative, empathetic, and, um, and naturally communicative. So you will find that when we're looking at the spectrum of alphanism, women would be more on the aware and adaptive because of our natural abilities. And when did the term become significant? Um, when you go back to research the term, you find that it, it referred to males until the 2000s when the term started to now be used. I think Margaret Thatcher was described as an alpha female and you, you, you can then find out more about her. But it's it, and usually it's it's used in a derogative, uh, critical way by men feeling intimidated, or by women hating another woman leader, or afraid that the woman leader hates them. Then they, it would be like she's an alpha female. But the interesting use of the term now, and it's very interesting, is that it's used in considering. In, uh, it's used as a consideration in dating. What, what, what would an alpha female best be suitable with? Would it be an, another alpha female or would it be um, what is called a, a, a beta male, which is someone who's not macho and you know the, the sweet kind uh, that would also love cooking uh, and would not compete with you. You do your leadership things and he's just happy to go and fetch kids. And so what would be the, the best um, the, what would be the best mate for an alpha female? That's an, another interesting uh, uh, discussion. So there are many different views on how this alpha female comes across. The one view is that she is more anti-feminine. The song they would say, achievement is the focus of this person. Anything else is secondary. Uh, she does not obsess about relationships. Um, alpha woman wouldn't concern herself with housework. They would, um, she would find someone else to delegate that kind of work to. She's, uh, she, she would not be married and because she's too focused on, on achievement to be married. And that um, 
the other is that she, she would despise alpha males and they tend to be terrified of her. They are, but, but, but apparently there are so few of this kind of alpha female that they end up living uh, or leading lonely lives. But I don't think they mind because their focus is on certain specific things, not on being surrounded um, by uh, friends. And then there's the other one that's based on the elephant model. I, I, I call it the elephant model. More, this is still the alpha female, more matriarchal, um, because elephants are led by the biggest, strongest female, and they're perceived as wise and kind, they keep the group together, shares uh, their leadership and strength, but also promotes community. And this is a woman of substance who combines physical potency with seriousness of purpose. Motherhood is, an, is essential to this one. She's mature and connected. She's not hampered and compromised by motherhood in any way. She's a comfortable mom. She doesn't juggle. This is somebody who has her staff together. And, um, and, 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 and then the last kind, or the last differentiation that I make is that the tendency is for most people's images to view an alpha female as just another man on heels. So it's like you, you take all the male attributes and you put them on this woman, you just have her wearing a skirt and, um, and the high heel shoes. But the different, the, the major differences between what would be um, called an alpha male and healthy alpha female. Um, because the alpha female would be somebody who has had an impact and has made an impact in many people's lives. And the, the way they constructed their domestic lives is, is that they are just true to themselves. Even when they may seem to be confrontational, it would not be for its own sake. It would be for them asserting themselves as this is who I am. They acknowledge their own complexities. And this is not the same as, the, as an alpha male as I've come to understand it. Yes, women can be as powerful as men, but to call the problem but to call the problem is um, with applying the term to them because it limits what's possible for, for, for women. Women have the skills to get what they want without being rough and dominant to get it and understand the main, the main characteristic of an alpha male is that dominance. And, uh, and the current research shows that this macho chief executive is becoming a thing of the past. The new generation of leaders are consensus builders who don't lead from the front, but push their teams forward using traditional female skills, such as listening. And so, so there's a kind of a woman, um, uh, of, of an alpha female that is very different from male, but it remains alpha in its own way, but it doesn't lose the, the, the feminine touch that women have. And, and then, and then, and then I, we come to a section who she really is. Um, with my psychology background, I studied a, a tool called the Enneagram, which classifies all of us into one of the nine types of people. And it, it, it's a very interesting study and the, the, the tests are very, you can do an online test for free, but the Enneagram model and, and there's been research done with babies as well. And babies could, once they are young, be classified into one of the nine types. But I find that the, the, the what we would call in the on the Enneagram points, the alpha female would be somebody that would qualify as a type eight. So when you know at the Enneagram and, and or when you, after you've done your Enneagram assessment, you could just check which type you are, but type eights are likely to come across as, um, as more classified as alphas, but alpha females are not only limited to type eights. Other types as well can demonstrate these characteristics. Um, the, the Bible verses that uh, kind of appealed to me as, as I was preparing for this uh, presentation, and, and don't ask me to explain them, but for me, there was just something that clicked with these verses. Genesis 1 verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. 
he created them. I, yeah, and then um, of course, Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And the truth is that some of us are more fearfully made than others and others are more wonderfully made than others and others have a balance of fearfulness and wonderfulness. And the, the verse I woke up with today is um, Ephesians 2 verse 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do God's works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And this work requires all of us. So, you know, with this part of, of, the, of the presentation, the intention I have is to call even that alpha lying under the bed hiding does not want to be associated with any of this stuff because they've heard so many negative things about alpha females. I'm saying we are all created in God's image even if that image comes um, rough and strong and powerful and um, the natural leader. Some of us are afraid to embrace this because we've seen and experienced people behaving badly, abusing power, abusing control and being violent. And we fear that we may be in possession of similar power and that if we do not allow ourselves or embrace who we are fully, we may end up being um, disastrous like what we've seen. The truth to note is that people behave badly not because they are powerful. People behave badly because they don't feel powerful. If you look closely to anybody who is abusive, you will find that that person has deep fears that we will identify, we will see that they actually do not have power. And what they, what they then work to do is to stifle every powerful person because they are afraid that should we embrace our own power, uh, they will be exposed. So on in the Enneagram, who is this person? So I said type eight, this type eight is known as the protector, uh, the challenger and the leader. Do you see how we need leaders and not all of us can be leaders. So now if we hide away and shy away from being leaders as women, are we not leaving a gap that is so necessary? So there are very good qualities of type eight that are needed. Eight are self-confident, they are strong, they are assertive, protective, resourceful, straight talkers and decisive. Yes, they can be egocentric and domineering. Everybody has a, a space to grow. So there's the weaknesses and there are strengths. Because of the weaknesses, it does not, we don't need to then um, run away from everything that is good about being um, a type eight. They feel they must control their environment, especially people sometimes becoming confrontational and intimidating. At their best, they are self-mastering. They use their strength to improve others' lives, become heroic, magnanimous, and inspiring. Their basic fear is of being harmed or controlled by others. So if we understand, if you have an, an eight in your life and you understand what their basic fear is, you can relate perfectly to that eight. And their best basic desire is to protect themselves, to be in control of their own life and destiny, and also to protect their loved ones and whoever they find vulnerable that they care for. Their key motivations, they want to be self-reliant, to prove their strength and resist weakness, to be important in the world, to dominate the environment, and to stay in control. So when you do a full study of this type of person, you will find there's a healthy level and we can see how merciful, uh, mastering self through their self-surrender to a higher authority. They are courageous, willing to put self in serious jeopardy to achieve their vision and have a lasting influence. They may achieve true heroism and historical greatness. So um, I'll take the highest level of healthy of a healthy eight, and then the weakest level nine, which is like the last one. If they get in danger, 
they may brutally destroy everything that has not conformed to their will rather than surrender to anyone else. They are vengeful, barbaric murderers. Remember, this is the same person. This person who behaves this way can grow up to be the protector that we saw. So, so all of us, we are created. It depends on where we are in the spectrum of growth. But, and sometimes when we observe somebody behaving badly, we conclude that that's them and and never give them a chance to grow and so so the, i'm getting to a part of the presentation where i look at why do we need alpha alpha females and i think that i've already covered a bit of that there was a study that was done that's called defining the alpha female a female leadership measure and that and the researchers developed a 14 item questionnaire to measure the alpha female personality i took the test online and the results were very interesting they looked at the qualities such as self esteem emotional intelligence leadership extraversion etc and this is what they found to be common among these um, alpha females they offer fearless leadership and uh, they possess high emotional intelligence. They are obsessive learners. The researchers found that this was a common theme among veteran alpha female leaders and that they would read constantly books about what they do and books and subject completely new to them. They were readers, they dive deep into their expertise, they learn about new fields, research, they ask questions, they learn from their experiences. The other thing that they found was that these people tend to be strong. It was interesting. One of the questionnaires asked them if they agreed with the following statements and they tended, I consider myself tough, I am stronger than most girls I know. I enjoy athletics and physical activity. This was one of the common traits. It seemed that mental strength is related to physical strength. And it would be interesting if you feel you don't have mental strength, you could work on developing your physical strength and see if it would not in turn help to improve your mental strength. These um, types of people are sought out. People constantly ask for their opinions. They are go to people in, 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 in their groups of friends. They would be asked for advice. And the researchers found that alpha females are often put in a position of mentorship. They are highly ambitious. They feel that their ambition is limitless, that their bounds of success do not exist, um, that they could achieve anything. They love their mothers. I found that so interesting. Uh, they love their mothers and their fathers, but apparently mothers have a very strong contribution. And the researchers found that the family situations and early socialization of alpha females mattered. Their relationship with their parents was strong, especially with their mothers. And apparently it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether the mother is an alpha or not. The fact that they have a strong relationship, a motherly female role model, um, gives encouragement to a, to a budding alpha personality. So, and, and they have exceptional confidence. I mentioned that and apparent confidence is contagious. So with, with this confidence comes a, a, the, that, a kind of influence that they tend to influence people around them. So when, when you are friends with an alpha female, somehow that kind of confidence wraps on you. They cultivate harmony. This this one was very interesting, and I do feel like it might it might irritate some of us a bit. So um, apparently, if you observe a group of of of, of women or girls and, and group dynamics, you would observe that alpha females and um, they, they make it easier for a group of girls to interact. And apparently, groups of girls do not survive if there is no one alpha female. And you cannot exist in one group. And that's when you find drama and until it's established who's strong. And all of these things are subtle. It's not like somebody stands up and says, I'm here to lead this group. No, it, it doesn't work like that. Alpha females are social conductors and 
the, the, the non-upper VPs are like the orchestra that's being conducted. So um, there was there was there was a study that was done. Apparently, then you may advise if you are at a social gathering and you see a group of women that are chatting uh, together, maybe there are five or six. Go to look at their feet. Okay? Their feet will be pointing towards one of them. All the other feet will be pointing towards this one. Even if that one is not talking, that's that's the energy that the alpha female comes with. And just by being there. And apparently when other non-alpha females leave, nothing happens, the group continues. But when the alpha female leaves the group, generally that's when people start to look, um, look elsewhere to go and join. And when and this thing is not communicated, it's just the power that comes. They leave, when they leave, there's a social vacuum. There can be only one alpha female in cluster. So, uh, only... Okay, uh, what do I want to say? Okay, so apparently we need these alpha women. And my question is, do we now have the courage to embrace that alphaness in each of us, knowing that it is a needed contribution in our societies? And uh, thank you. Was I too fast for Leander? Okay. No, okay. all is oh. in order. All is in order. The only thing is, how you speak had suddenly changed from nicely rounded. You have a Twitter man. Twitter what we call the high pitch. So I don't know if it, 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 Mike, can you say something to me? And meet yourself. Oh, highly. Yeah, no, it's fine. Let's let's run with it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, go on. Everything is in order. Come back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to say what I've observed is that there could be a tendency for these strong women to be victimized because they are strong and everybody takes it that they are strong and they can take it. The worst that I've observed is in relationships and you would hear the partner commending the the, the the strong woman to be a strong partner and when you look into that relationship then you discover that woman has been put through a lot of i don't have a, a word conducive for this forum to use but there's been put through a lot and they have nyamez out a lot for them to be recognized as, as strong. So my advice is that for, for, a, for a, the alpha woman, don't base your alphaness on how much abuse you can take. I, I hope that you can call yourself strong because of how kind and how self-loving you are to yourself. So whilst you're looking at all of these things that are happening, you don't forget yourself because, because with that kind of a character that's protective and looking after everybody else, it is very easy to forget yourself. And we can see by looking at your face that yeah, you are strong because it's all written on your face how much you have enjoyed so so i i i, I wanted to add that that this was i encourage all of us to embrace the qualities that we were created with we don't forget to take care of ourselves in in the process and and i and i, I find that it, it can be very difficult especially in the workplace when we're working with men and alpha men i know how you could, we can be disregarded until you bring out the power and and can argue talk to talk with a man. Then you may start to get some attention, but that's strenuous for us, but because that's not who we are. So I, I do wish that we can remain in touch with who we are and not have to change ourselves. You 
because we believe that um, for us to be respected or listened to or to have an impact or to make an influence, we need to be macho or tough or rough. Let the definition of your alphaness come from you and how it serves you, not necessarily how you can compete with a man or a particular man um, at work and how that you must now be fighting all injustices. That can be tiring. Thank you. I will pause there for the questions. Yeah, yeah, what an eye-opening conversation. <laughs> yeah, no. What an eye-opening conversation. Thank you so much, Mama, for, that, for those thoughts. As well as we are happy, they seem very informed. All right. Uh, you, you sound like you're speaking from a place of familiarity. All right. Uh, so as, that, as we're not joined by somebody who's speaking about things they do not have in tested. Um, I mean, the Bible always tells us to uh, prove all things, okay? Prove all things and hold on to that which is good. So you sound as if you come from a place of proper understanding, having walked the journey, but you will confirm that as we continue the conversation. But having said that, a lot of things got me thinking, got me thinking. Now I need to go ask, and, yeah, I need to go and do my own testing now. You gave us challenges. I don't know if you realize that. You gave us challenges and said, hey, dude, uh, sis, go do, try this for yourself and see how it unfolds. So having said that, um, there was a request as well. I don't know why it was directly DM'd to me. Uh, it could have been said on, on the chat itself. Can I ask you that you share my assessment links? Ne? Lawa that you were mentioning for e-testing. So there's a, there's a humble request on that. Would, could you please share so that Nati, we can be equipped in that regard and go and do our own research. So thank you for those thoughts. At this point, I mean, I'm just, just touching on, on what I've been gathering and collating so far. And I've got two hands. Is there anyone else who'd like to say anything? Please kindly uh, raise your hand at this point so that we can give you a chance to have a conversation with us. Let me start with Miss Dube. I'll come to you just now, Ash. Miss Dube, I've asked you to unmute you. Please go ahead, man. Thank you okay, for sharing. Okay, hi. Hi. Yeah, so many, so many. Okay, so I have um, two questions. Number one, is an alpha female born or, I mean, born with the qualities of, of being an alpha female, or an alpha female is made. For example, Nkule, I'm born not an alpha female, but because of, of the stuff that I, I go through, then I become an alpha female. Okay, probably that was my second question. So I'll put it into one. So is an alpha female born with the qualities of, of you know, like the, the characteristics is that corner layers or, or an alpha female is taught, like you, it, it's something that you learn to be yeah i think that's my question okay okay thank you for the question Ms. Dube. and uh, let me give to ash as well to touch on okay okay let's give a chat ash ash ash, ash it's your turn i must have meet you go ahead bud. thanks lee uh thank you so much uh sister nasha uh, mine is going to be uh, quite controversial eh? but it's not personal at the same time so i'm going to be commenting from both ends not just uh, from a female perspective um, and this is more of what somebody else put to me at the time when we had a discussion on alpha males and i want to solicit your opinion on it and the the the, the, the suggestion or rather input that was given was that um these things alpha male alpha, alpha female they are demonic social constructs uh, that unnecessarily cl uh, classify um, people with the intention to strip them of their dignity. 
and they should not have any place in our society. They, and that there is no difference between classifying people as an alpha and uh, classifying people as being black and white and then putting out the white man as being more superior uh, to the black man. And that it is all a social construct that should not find itself at least um, you know, within a Christian setup, uh, because and you know, just going through your your presentation, the, and and it is to say the things you are saying are true. They exist, and we see them. But um, are they Christian though? Uh, you know, you talk about um, the shoes where they are facing. They will be facing in the direction of the alpha male, of the alpha female, or alpha male. And as soon as that alpha female stands, then everybody. Uh, is scurrying around to see where else they can now go because the alpha has since departed from their presence. Um, it is no different, you know, with um, a white man. When a white man comes in, um, you know, into a room and then suddenly, you know, the guy could be as poor as they come. Uh, but if he steps in into a room with black people, there is a certain degree uh, of respect that is automatically afforded to him. And that, though existent, is not natural. It came as a result of years and years of oppression to a point where black people uh, still think that the white man is superior to them. And even if a white kid steps in into the room, he deserves audience and attention. And so the fact that it exists uh, does not make it right. And, you know, it is not something that as Christians we ought to be perpetuating. If anything, we should be figuring ways to get rid of this demonic uh, classifications. Uh, I would like to get your opinion on that. Okay. All right, let's pack that. Let's pack that for now. Let's take just one more. Miss Duba, I don't know if your hand is still up or it's from the first comment. If you just take it down for us. And then Uzaza. Zaza, is your hand up? There's a funny thing on my computer. All right. Zaza, your hand is up. Can I ask you on YouTube a little bit? Go ahead. You've been you've been a good two thirty year uh, of late. <laughs> you break the ice. Of late yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, thanks for taking my hand. Um, so oh, Ashley has uh, actually touched what I wanted to ask. Every time when we when this alpha thing comes to mind, I it nothing good comes out of it it's toxic someone who's bossy and all so when he says that um these are demonic what 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 it makes sense it makes sense and uh we have a very perfect example of an alpha female in the bible which is a bell yo that woman was powerful Bazalwane. that woman was powerful and it's, it's quite unfortunate that he she found she found a weak man, but um, she was powerful in as much as she did a lot of wrong things. But when you look at the side, the power of influence over uh, the husband and the, the nation as as it is, it's it's powerful. Should should I I don't know. It's it's this term itself just disturbs me. I see nothing good out of it. Can we maybe, I don't know, is it possible maybe to, to, to give a term that is more accommodating? Alpha, if alpha is full bossy, like oh, it's heavy for, for, for us. And after, 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 oh, another, the question that I would have is that after doing this, um this testing or the the thing that you test with is it possible that you can be both alpha and something else and or you can only be an alpha or whatever so is it possible to be both or to be on the both sides uh yeah i would really want to please if you can share as well the 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 link so that we can also test yeah uh, i would want to know if i'm an alpha or both or whatever it is. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, over to you, Mama. You can just do a roundup of the first three questions of the conversation. And by the way, it's not directed at her only. Uh, all of us, if you've got an input, like for instance, I've got my eating and I would like to say in response to Ashley, but I'll do that just after she does that. So yeah, over to you, Mama. 
Thank you. Um, the first question was on whether um, alpha females, the, the qualities, um, is it born, uh, are born or made? And, and that was also the I looked at the, at the topic when I started. And, and I don't have a straight answer, but um, I, I think from what I've found, it looks like um, more of it comes from being shaped by the environment as, as you put it. But I do, I, I also just then wonder when, when we then go deeper into it, wonder whether the circumstances that we encounter are they, are, are they, are they by chance, or are they part of the path that we are meant to follow to become who we are meant to be? So, so that that's that's another discussion, perhaps a broader discussion to look at. But the the research has shown that from early on children will show leadership quality. So if we look at the alpha female purely from a leadership capabilities or qualities point of view, and then we ask whether leaders are born or made, we have an answer to that. Some are born and some are made. So when one wants to be, they can go in pursuit of being, and yet there are people that are natural at it. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. And then the, the term, I agree, the term itself, for instance, before you even go to look at the official definition of the term, it does something that you're like, I don't wanna be called that. It, it's not a nice term. It, it, it sounds, it also generally terms tend to group people and people tend to be more than what the terms mean but when we but because of my psychology background and we work with definitions and we work with observing human behavior and so that's how I got to be comfortable but I think it's like because you exhibit alpha female qualities some some somebody might not like to be called that don't call me that yes I'm, I'm maybe I may be performing a leadership role. I may be a successful woman. I may be powerful. Those are all gifts that I am endowed with by my creator. I may be talented, I may be highly motivated, I may be ambitious. I may be all these positive things that somebody looked at them and said, then the term is alpha, is alpha female. I like there's a comment and, and, and I found it comes from animal research. Term alpha comes from research on animal behavior, which is used to designate the male animal that is the leader of the pack. These days, the term, yes. That's where the term comes from. And that's why my presentation is not focused on whether we adopt the term or not, but that we looked at this, we look at these qualities and, and say, yes to, to taking the part because in the case of most women, we tend to downplay our leadership qualities for fear of coming across as rough, for fear of men being scared of approaching us and we want to play soft and feminine and, 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 and yet we are given these qualities for a reason. And I, I'm arguing that these qualities have a place in us performing our full roles and our reason for being. Um, and whether one can do both, it's been found that some people can display the alpha female qualities in specific settings. Like you can be that at work and not at home. And so you like two people at once, but the fact is that you have it in you and you can use it whenever. Sometimes, um, because some, some, some natural leaders 
do not necessarily always choose to lead. But when they see a vacuum, like a project is going um, downwards and it's not going towards what it's supposed to, to achieve, then somebody can come up and this is a quiet person and just point the line to say, no, I think we need to do this, this and that, so-and-so do that, I'll do this, you do that. And for that moment, they've, they've demonstrated their leadership qualities, use them, and then they go back to taking the back seat. So um, I think you can, you can use both. Whether it's demonic or not, I will not comment. I, I don't have the expertise and that's not my field to classify things as demonic or, or not. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, just picking up from where you are at, um, at face value, there's nothing wrong with possessing power. I'm not saying someone is saying something. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with possessing power. All right. So a human being can possess power. There's, there's no taboo in that. Okay. Uh, let me just take you to my lived experiences. For those who don't know, most of the time when we purchase stuff, it's an emotional decision more than it's about thinking about practicality, whether you can afford it, and so on and so forth. When you come to a store and you buy something, emotions, at the point where you decide I'm taking this and I'm going with it, emotions are the ones that are driving you. So in the space of selling products, whether tangible or intangible, those who know how to close deals and sales are those who know how to use skill set, ability, experience, unique knowledge, how to make sure they close a deal to a point whereby in some other instances, it would look like something spiritual is happening. But no, that person has got the power, the skill set, the knowledge, and the ability to apply it when it's needed. And they're able to close the sale. What am I saying? What am I saying is a proper salesperson would have training in how to work with the capability of a person's psychology. So that when I come and I present a project to you or I present a product or whatsoever, I'm intercommunicating with, I'm using my interpersonal skills to intercommunicate with it, my ability of reading where you are, my ability of reading your body language, I mean, the, in, in, in the ability of, of, of using my skills to read or to direct you towards making a decision about the product that I am with that I have with me here. And what those people do, like I'm talking, I'm talking about a proper salesperson. What a proper salesperson does, man, they do what they call affirmation exercises, all right? They affirm something, like every time they wake up in the morning, like you speak things that are not theirs in there. And you are claiming your portion of the power. And you are saying, you know what? I'm going out there. I'm going to walk into the board with you there. I'm going to take what's mine and I'm going to come back with this deal. 500 million is coming to my company. So at face value, people will be like, nah, man, something spiritual is happening. And there's nothing happening there. You just went through your proper training. You lived your experiences. You, you were beaten down at some point. You fell down and hard. You discovered things. You tested them, you tried them out, and you realize, no, no. You know, when, I, when I'm in this space of mind where, where I, I wake up and I affirm things into existence, I become powerful because that which says you can't moves out of my vocab, and I'm able to achieve the unachievable. So where I'm going with this is when an alpha female conversation comes about, and naturally, I'm using the example that Ash was using, and naturally, there's an element of dominance. Just because it exists in my books, it doesn't mean it's evil. It doesn't mean it's devilish. It doesn't mean it's um, not supposed to be part of the Christian construct. 
The only problem is we could be entertaining or interrogating one or two things. The fear of the unknown, right? And probably misconceptions, or we probably are right. That's what I'm saying. It's either we fear what we do not know because this person seems like they are here and they claim the power, and they know why they are here. They came to do what they came to do. They do it and they leave. Done. Fear of the unknown. Two, misconception about, okay, I just saw something I don't understand here, and it's wrong, it's right, it's not right, it's wrong, so on and so forth. You're, miscon you're, you're misinformed about what it is, or probably it might be demonic. So I'm of the view that, uh, same with you, I don't agree, like I, I can't say if it's demonic or not, I'm not qualified for that, but my lived experiences say that if someone possesses something that not just like out of 10 people, one person has, that doesn't mean it's a construct that is evil. That doesn't mean it's a construct that is demonic. It's just a matter of some people understand tapping into the unknown and they know how to navigate around it. And they go through experiences that train them how to use it, how to utilize it effectively as they grow and as they mature. So having said that, when I tie it with your comments as well, um, it, 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 it's a thought that actually brings me to a space where I am off, I'm honestly of the view that um, for people who are in an upper male position, not only upper male, also for people who are in a disadvantaged position. No, no, let me leave the disadvantage for later. Alpha male, alpha female, and power positions. Now, let me take it that way. Power positions. I pose the same question that you and I asked. You. What does it say to our experiences on this earth? Is this our portion? Is this where we're supposed to be? What we face, this, the challenges that we face, does it mean, oh, okay, Tina, yeah, yes. What about Tina, see, blessed, what we say about this Kurumela? We can speak for ourselves when, we, when, we, when, when the time is right. We're able to claim the power, we're able to make the decisions, we're able to be the pack. Does this mean that because we are oppressed in the way in which we are oppressed, we live the life of oppression? I mean, we are, we are discriminated or because we are not like the ordinary pack. And the reaction and how we are acted towards is our portion. So I'm of the same sentiment in that regard. So I'm going to leave my thought right there, which is just because some things don't necessarily seem to make sense to people. That doesn't automatically qualify it as demonic, discrimination, apartheid, yara, 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 yara. And the comparison between the social ill constructs that our world has been through, I mean, apartheid and so on and so forth, and linking it to where we are today. There might be similarities here and there. However, I wouldn't be quick to say uh, just because a person is affirmative in the way in which they act, it means that it's the same as the white Buddha men who came and they claim power amongst black or white people. So those are my thoughts. I just took this opportunity to just raise something because even though Ashley last week, he struggled to say it unless it was only at the end. That's when he could actually voice the opinion. So I just wrote the way for now. So at this point, I'm going to take it back along. Ms. Dube, SK, Rev, and who else? Yeah. Takalani, Ms. Dumbe, SK, Rev, in that order, and then we're going to come back to you, Mama, so you can raise some thoughts. And then if you've got a comment, please kindly raise your hand if you want to audiorize it. However, continue to type on the chat. I'll ask you to unmute Takalani. Hello, Mama. Hello, Mama. Hello, Mama. Hello, Thanks. Uh, just a quick question. Um, is the alpha female and also an alpha male able to be in the same crawl? If not, why? If yes, what are the advantages of that? Thanks. Straight to the point. <laughs> yeah, that's another alpha male. He knows what he wants. Uh, I'm going to ask to SK. Yeah. SK, oh, SK second. Okay, let's go with Ms. Dube. Ms. Dube. Please go ahead. I've asked you on YouTube. Go ahead, yeah. Okay. Um, 
All right. So I think when what what's coming to mind now is the fact that the the whole situation with alpha female, as I said, something about the the term itself, you know, bringing some ideas, which it's, it's someone maybe who's I don't know who's dominant, who's a bully, etc., and all of that. I think that the situation or the term we have with alpha female is the the same way that most of us were thinking about feminism, right? Which when you talk about feminism, you're talking about someone who's disrespectful to men, who thinks that they're better off without a man, etc. So the way we think and the way we understand um, is definitely gonna have an impact on, on the way we view it. Alpha female is just a term that is used. It's got, look, we, we don't need to, to say, is it biblical or not? It, it's a term that's used to explain a woman or a certain female with certain characteristics, right? So an alpha female doesn't mean it's someone who's dominant, not necessarily. Yes, there are some alpha females who are dominant, but there are other characteristics of alpha females. So an alpha female can be a, a, an amazingly good wife, submissive wife. I saw um, a, a quote on the other day, I think it was on Wednesday, that says an, an alpha female is able to submit when a, a man is leading correctly. So sometimes an alpha female is, is seen as an alpha female because when leadership is not there, then one of the two needs to step up in the situation. In the workplace, if men are not doing what they're supposed to do, maybe in the positions that they have, then if I'm the CEO, then I'm gonna make sure that the company runs according to how a company is supposed to run, right? And then some other person will view me as an alpha female because of the role that I'm playing, ensuring which Yonkintong Yenzayo is in line and is done correctly. So I think information will also help us. The term alpha female is just there to, to help us understand which these types of females who are able to do this, who are able to, to lead, who are able to, when we are all sitting or maybe we're in a situation where there's, we're struggling or there's danger, they are able to say, hey, listen, let's do one, two, three, four, five. But, but I don't know, initiative and, and just lead us somehow, you know? So I think maybe that's where we get the confusion to say alpha female is not about disrespect. It's not about being dominant. It's, it's not saying, um, and I don't know, let, let's be disrespectful or it's someone who wants to be a bully, someone who wants to, to, to stand. There, there's a lot of alpha females who are married, who are wives, who are very submissive to their husbands. And yeah, it, it's a good thing, man. I think it's, it's the characteristics that we choose to see. So Tina, let's redefine it then to say, in our Christian world, when we're talking of an alpha female, this is what we are talking about. Because most of these things came out with the right mindset, but because it's the same club, then things get corrupted along the way. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for touching on the clarity issue. And then Ms. Dube, okay, that was you. SK, I asked you, I'm going to go ahead by the SK? All right, while we're still looking for SK, my colleagues have just informed me that there's also some S sentiment on Facebook. I think it's a question that has been asked indirectly, in a way. So the question is, is coming from Mohaha. It says, is it possible to be an alpha, alpha in certain situation and be a non-alpha in another, or like i.e. be an alpha at work, church, etc., but none at home as a married woman. I think those are attached on this. Uh, and then, oh yeah, she even came back and he or she came back and says, hey, check out this thing. now. So she wants to understand. We signaled that I'm boss. Uh, yeah, she wants to understand. Are you able to switch between roles here and there? So, yes, SK, I've asked you to unmute you, Uko Namalu. Okay, we're struggling with SK. I think in that way, SK is always giving us a headache. Let me know, Maubu, let me 
Rev, I'm asked you to unmute you. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me? You can hear me, my leader. You can? Yes, we can hear you. All right. So oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And thank you to all assisting. Um, I've just been listening and um, going through the comments as well. And you know, I, I cannot help but feel that there is a certain escape from, from the terms that are being used. You know, mm -hmm. I side completely with uh, Uzaza because I think she was on point. And I think the, the, the woman that everyone is trying to describe here is not alpha. She is something else. She may be, uh, you know, skilled in leadership, but she is not alpha. Because if we take that understanding of alpha from where it is derived from, it is impossible, absolutely impossible to be an alpha and not be dominant. If you're not dominant, forget about being an alpha, you're not one. Because the main component of being an alpha is being dominant. And when we take that from the animal kingdom of being an alpha male, and that's where it comes from, we, 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 we took that from there. What it simply means is that the alpha male has asserted his position through fessing up with other males and um, engaged in battle or fight with them and exerted his strength physically so much so that others back down because they fear what he may do or his abilities of what he can do, right? So the main component of being an alpha is the fact that other voices will be hushed down when you speak. Other voices are forced to bow when you speak. Other people are forced to sit down when you speak. And the alpha is undefeatable. The alpha is the one who is always on top of the game, more so amongst others. So now when we speak about being dominant as an alpha, who are you, who are you dominant to? Who are you dominant to? Because if you're, if you're dominating spaces, you are definitely not an alpha. You need to dominate others. So others must be at a point of, of respect after having been in a battle with you and having exerted their strength and failed against you because you're strongest. Basically, in order for you to lead, your strength has been tested amongst others and you have come up stronger than them and they've got no choice but to yield their power to you because obviously you are the most powerful. They've tested you, they've tried and they've failed. So when, 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 you, get to, when, when you get to the point of, of an alpha female, even the definitions that you said when I used at first also talk about uh, power, authority and influence. You can, you can be an influential person without being an alpha. However, you cannot be an alpha without being powerful and authoritative to a point where others, they hush down simply because you've got that power and you can use it, right? So when you talk about an alpha female, I do not know why we are trying to sanctify these terms and make them sound like they are kind of like biblical. Yes, they are, they, they, they are terms that we can describe people that can live peaceably amongst others and, 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 and stuff like that. So for B, I think we should be looking for another term, even amongst men, of, 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 of someone who is called, someone who is powerful, without saying that an alpha, because an alpha has to be more powerful than everybody else. And, you know, so the word here is just being like, you know, but it's not a good word. Being an alpha in the Christian setting does not work for me. And also there's something that was just gonna say that I wanted to ask earlier on. She spoke, I don't know if I will be maybe or something, but she said something about uh, being confident as an alpha woman to the point where 
you do not have to play feminine in order to be loved. So my question then comes and be like, okay, so being an alpha female, does it remove from you, you know, does it remove from you being a woman, being feminine? Does it remove that? Because then if you have to, to play feminine in order to not appear alpha, then how do you balance being a female and being an alpha at the same time? Because it seems to me that once you become an alpha, you are going to be less feminine. It's a question. I'm, I'm not saying anything with this. I'm just asking a question. Is it possible to become, to, to be a feminine woman, to be really like, you know, feminine and, and be an alpha at the same time? Or you then have to assert some strength, you know, some power that says and even men are afraid of you, not only in your character, but like in physical, which doesn't deal and anything can happen. She's not feminine, she's not a soft person. So what is the balance there? But in one line, I'm just saying that the alpha thing and the alpha female, let's just lose it. Use another term to describe that woman who's powerful, who's progressive, who's moving forward, who's smart, you know, and everything, but not alpha. Once you say alpha, just understand you're using dominance. You're using you're, you're someone who has power, someone who can be in battle with others and exert her strength and win and be respected because not because you are smart, you are considered smart, but because because we are when we change to hands, there's no one who can stand. So you must be dominant to be alpha. Let's just see you as a she. Thank you. All right, thank you for those thoughts, my leader. So there's also as well the dynamics of power. Should I say power and humility? I don't know if it's quite, it qualifies. Should I say power and humility? Because the way as to uh, my brother just pointed out he, the power dynamics, it paints a picture of Contrast, war, galiwa, and 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 and. Um, so, could I also add the dynamic of which power, like power, like a higher paradigm? You know, you're not in an ordinary level. You are in a higher paradigm in humility. Could could I also add that? Now, I mean, just like you, my brother. I'm not saying anything. I'm just throwing it in there as well. Uh, as we think about that, let's also think about. Say we drop the word alpha, what does that do for the conversation? Because at the end of the day, we must all live with that. Say we drop the word alpha, what does it do to advance the conversation so that we can leave with something out of this two hour session that we've had? So I'm going to take the last comment for now, the last round of comments, because after this, after this we are beginning to wrap it up. And then 4.30, we are calling it a day. SK, I've asked to unmute you, my leader. Hello, can you hear me? You can hear me, my leader. Oh, all right. Um, I don't know that it's a comment, or but it's more of a <clears throat> If ever you've been called alpha, uh, uh, you need to start working on your communication skills with other people because it comes as a result of people are bruised around you. Whenever things are not done your way, people get bruised. You start hitting them with either with words or physical because as long as you're an alpha, you are aggressive towards your will. Uh, no one must stand in front of you. So if ever you've been called an alpha, I think uh, like what Rev is, was trying to was, was explaining, Oguti, um, well, when, whenever you say alpha, it talks about being aggressive, being dominant. So my point is that if ever you've been called alpha, start working on your communication skills. Otherwise, people, they don't like being around you. They are just tolerating you, maybe because you've got the money they need, or you've got the power they need. Um, I'm talking this from experience. Uh, last two weeks, two, these last two weeks, I was dealing with a client who also thinks she's an, uh, she's an alpha female. 
and um, her husband is more like he's not there. It's quite as if he's not there. She will come and harass us, and you know everything must be. You know everyone must be. When she's here, and then when the husband comes, and the husband will be like, "No, don't mind her," you know. Uh, so I'm just saying, what you if start working on your communications, it's more of a weakness. It's not a strength, especially around the, the community. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Bob. Oh, that's, a, that's a clear thought. But it don't be perceived as with a lot of trial and error, but then keep going. And then with that being said, Ma, I'm just going to hand over to you to do the second last round because we, we're beginning to wrap it up. I mean, uh, my colleagues even know, but once it hits towards half past four, the conversation is closed, all right? So I'm going to ask you to unmute, then take it, take it up for us. Don't forget the Facebook comment, Yagam for as well. Okay, thank you, thank you. But um, first, I would like to thank Ms. Dube for that co um, that contribution. I think it covered a lot of questions, especially the questions um, on Zoom. Is an alpha? Is there such a thing as an alpha female who becomes a wife? How do they become a wife? I think in her con uh, contribution, she covered those. There was a question from Dagalani whether the the alpha female an alpha female and an alpha male can coexist and what would be the outcome am i am i audible fine yes we can hear you now. okay and 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 i and i think that in responding to that i'll also be covering maybe not entirely rev's uh, contribution um so um, I, I may have, I, I did touch on this, but maybe I did not come out clearly that um, it's been found that there are different types of alphas. Ne? Remember, we are working with definitions as presented and research that was done, whether we accept the term or we don't. Personally, I'm uncomfortable with the term. I would not like to be called an alpha female, but I, I would willingly claim So uh, there are four types of alphas, ne? and a point is made that not all alphas talk over people, argue or drive objectives at the expense of inclusion or collective wisdom. Alphas mm -hmm. are a combination of awareness and adaptation. Ne? So in the four types, the first type would be somebody who is unaware and non-adaptive. And I think that our focus is more on this type. This is the type that ends up being a bully and often the reason for there to be abusive power and dysfunction. It's just one of the different types of alphas. There's the aware and adaptive type of an alpha. This one, and in the explanation even said, this tends to be women because of their natural instincts of being collaborative, empathetic, and natural communicators. And they help to buffer the downside of being an alpha. So to Tagalani's question, whether the two, an alpha male and an alpha female can coexist, I would say it depends on what types of alphas they are. If they are both unaware and non-adaptive, they would not, that situation would not work. But if one of them is aware and adaptive, that one would be able to manage the situation that they coexist and even make sure that they achieve the objectives of whatever the grouping is. The other type is the aware but non-adaptive and the other one is non-aware but adaptive. The aware adaptive alphas, whether they are male or female, are the most successful at influencing others. Somebody asked what's the role of an alpha female in the plan of salvation. This is what an alpha female that's adaptive and aware, they would be most influential at, 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 and because they know when to turn up 
portend down there, alpha. When there's chaos, you will you will value an alpha female. Yes, we may not call it alpha. I'm beginning to worry about the term because I think that the term is making it difficult for some of us to appreciate the good qualities that can be possessed by these people that are called that are called alpha females. And the most dangerous alpha is the unaware, non-adaptive alpha. They are the reason why we are having this conversation, we're having these difficulties. We want to do away with the whole time because we have experienced them and we have not liked to be in their presence. This is why we feel once you are called, and, and, and oh, SK said something, if you are called an alpha, it means check yourself. I agree with you, SK, but I would also like to say, check who's calling you an alpha. What motivates them? Because you could be doing everything right, but some people naturally resist and leader. There are people who have a problem with every leader, no matter what. The fact that you are giving somebody an instruction, it becomes a problem because if you are aware and adaptive, communication is one of your strengths. And that those your communication abilities could be the reason why you have made it into the um, alpha uh, definition to, to, to begin with. Okay, and then... Um, what was the answer? Okay, the play feminine and down. I think that um, you know what we can do as a church. Um, you know. Sorry about that. I'm going to say why my again they just unmute themselves. But go on. Okay. Um. When when I made the comment about downplaying your alpha qualities and play feminine. I was not insinuating that you cannot be feminine and alpha, ne? but I was saying our perception of what is accepted. For instance, if I'm in a church board meeting with men, I do not voice my ideas wanting to appear sweet. That, that, I think that I was talking something like that. When being feminine is associated with being quiet and therefore not voicing our views, when, when somebody could be sitting with a powerful solution to a problem, but they look at the gender around the room and they feel like I cannot be contributing and, and in fact disagreeing with so and so who is the as an alpha male is an example, but the, the very term alpha female says this is a feminine person who possesses leadership qualities. So I, I did not mean that we would be, we would be, it's an either or situation according to the research that was done and, um, and, and as presented. The Facebook question, uh, what was it? It was, are you able to be both the alpha and the not so oh, alpha? In different yeah. situations. Yes, yeah. I had covered. Uh, I remember we, we had discussed that. Re remember qualities, consciousness, and awareness. You can choose where you to exercise what power you have. So yes, yes, we can. But the, the, I think what the point that we're making here is that you have the qualities, whether you only exercise them at work and you take a break at home and you're like, oh, I have a husband, let him lead. I do not even want to participate in the leadership. I am led. He's the head of this family. It, it does not mean that you don't have the, 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 the qualities though, but you are choosing for whatever your reasons. Yes, you can be, you can be in, depending on the situation. I even made a, an example of somebody who may not prefer to be, um, to be a leader, but the, the, they do have it. And when, 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 when there's a chaos, it affects them because they have the, the abilities to lead. And so they would show up only to correct a chaotic situation or if the whoever is supposed to be the leader is not there, then they show up 
when in that moment of showing up, they're exercising their inherent qualities, but they don't choose to work with them. Thank you so much, ma'am. I think she's come to clarify some stuff. So in the yes, scenario, is the non-adaptive alpha, am I correct, ma'am? No. So there is an element of unique applications for unique situations. It's just a matter of understanding, rather than to have a broad overall covering understanding of, of what alpha is. And I think I'm gonna just quickly put together a poll so we can have some kind of a, maybe a feel of where we are regarding the purpose of this conversation. So with that being said, anyone who's got some thoughts as we be prepared to glide to end, because we'll be closing it off in 30 minutes, uh, in 29 minutes to be precise. I've asked you on YouTube, either Nosy or Ivan, go ahead. I'm sorry if I'm going to be taking you back if this Take was a case today. Back. Yeah. Um, so is there a difference in, in definition of terms between a male alpha and a female alpha? Because um, it, it, when, it, when it comes to male alpha, it says a male alpha is a man who takes charge, one who imposes his will on others. And the alpha male is loud, brash, doesn't care what anybody else thinks. So that's an alpha male. Doesn't care what people think, is loud, brash, and imposing. So very imposing, very domineering. So is that, so that's, that's a definition of an alpha male. So is that the same definition for an alpha female or is there a difference? And if there's a difference, why is there a difference? Um, because I think the reason why people are having, even myself, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit confused because when, when Pastor Ketelo was here and we spoke about the alpha male uh, and he discussed that um, sometimes the way people behave is because of fear, you know, you are scared of something, so that's why you behave in that manner. And alpha, in the end, we when we were discussing, we said it is not a good term because of the definition of what it means. So maybe can someone clarify, is there a difference between an alpha male and an alpha female? And if so, what are the differences and why is there a difference? All right, thank you so much. Uh, confusion. All right, let's let's we'll speak to that now. Uh, I distributed a poll. Let's take some few seconds to just respond to it. And I'm going to take in your chin and then I'm gonna bring it back to you. Is there a difference between male, female? Does the alpha word apply? And that's what the poll speaks to as well. I've asked to unmute you, Mr. Chin. Hi everyone. Hello. Uh, I want to first, yes, I want to just, um, I uh, will say that, you know, I came in a bit late, uh, caught some of the presentation, very interesting. I uh, really enjoyed the bit that I caught. Uh, I couldn't help but at least, um, well, my mind just went back to a time and it's really just a contribution, if you will. Um, I was in the military at one point and you know this this concept of an alpha personality um it's something that i, I think i'm quite um, familiar with um by nature i'm an introvert i sometimes you may not know because sometimes i can be the loudest one in the room but you know i'm an introvert by nature and what i had to do was to just adopt um was to realize a certain dimension of myself even um and it had to do with taking initiative it had to do with being bold when communicating it had to do with um actually having a plan beforehand to exercise that leadership 
and these are components of being alpha. You can still be alpha, I believe, while still being an introvert. You can just, of course, ad, um, adjust it if you will. And I think even putting that with the topic on hand, um, I don't see why a, a young lady um, could not also exercise said qualities while still being submissive. I think it's actually quite possible if you're gonna look at it from that angle with um, taking initiative, you know, situation specific, um, and of course, uh, being bold in her communication, of course, when the situation calls for it too. I think it can work to the benefit of her partner if it is that she has these qualities because, you know, that support, <laughs> that support, of course, um, you know, it's welcome in many respects. I'll put it that way. Uh, I saw a comment in the chat, someone actually referenced someone actually um, that I'm trying to make alpha sound good. Uh, not sound good. I think I'm trying to build, to bring a balanced perspective to it. Uh, I'm not advocating for one side or the other. I think I'm just, you know, sharing my experiences and also bringing a balanced standpoint or view. So yeah, I never really had a question, by the way. I just wanted to just offer a contribution. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I know we appreciate it. Um, yeah, just in an effort to further clarify the understanding Yaga, Yaga knows it regarding the alpha word and in light of the poll so far about whether it's fitting for the Christian or not. And understand that you take what you take from 230 conversations, apply it into your life or not on the basis of a proper understanding. So it's imperative that we leave this platform having been on the same page. And um, ideally, the aim is to be edified. So in an effort to clarify that, Ma, I don't know if there are any thoughts in response to her on your side. OK, um, is it fun year dance? Yes, ma'am. OK, I, I think she arrived late. Ne? We did cover the, the definition. And I, I and I think the operating word in the definition of the of the word uh, alpha is is that it has morphed. It started from defining animal behavior. It morphed into a male definition, and it's now customized to define a female. And so it would be different from the male uh, definition. And then the female definition uh, is, is very nice. Um, I'm, I'm going back to, to it. The definitions that I chose, it's, yeah, it's more or less this, but I took two. Alpha female, a woman who has embraced her, her leadership ambition. She's talented, highly motivated and self-confident. The other one says, an alpha female is a powerful and successful woman, often in a leadership role. Alpha females are often described as intimidating by men and women alike. That's the definition that you will find from the dictionary. And so, yes, I, 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 took, the, I took Pastor Ketelo's presentation into consideration. And, I, I, and so in my presentation, I, I, from time to time, I was making a comparison to say, though an alpha male would appear like this, a woman, because we are a woman and we have our own inherent strengths, we are not likely to appear like that, except if we are toxic and we are unaware and non-adaptive. That's the only time that we would show up like that. And that says we have room for growth. It's not an acceptable way of behaving to behave like that. And that you can still be a woman leader 
and, and I'm suspecting we are soon going to do away with the term alpha altogether uh, because of the connotations that that term comes with. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks to okay. Andrew for those comments. They were balanced and appreciated. Okay. All right. So, guys, it seems like CIA. So it drops like a malignancy alpha. So it redefines the purpose for the conversation. The purpose for the conversation now becomes there are those who can identify through their lived experiences. I'm going to take you now, Mr. Fair and, and Rev, taking it back to you. Through their lived experiences, according to the research aspects, that were brought into this conversation so that we can understand better who they either are, right, and who they exist around. In other words, I'm speaking to if you identify somebody who probably fits the profile that is being spoken of, whether it's through the one definition, two, three, or the fourth one. So I'm, I'm just trying to unpack. Um, uh, the, the, the redefined purpose of the conversation now, because we have decided we are dropping the word alpha. So I think the conversation yaga 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 alpha mele is in asas in asas susen venene for for why we are having this conversation. And now we are saying there are those who are unique and different. There are those who are humble, and there are those who got a sense of standing out. So from this point of view, for the for 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 which Omar came and, and she said, okay, fine. For my psychology background, from from research point of view, from uh, lived experiences, let's inform some of you who might necessarily be these aspects of a particular uh, behavioral and as well as character as an individual, and let's equip you to be able to utilize them for the advancement of humanity. So we are there now. So this, this uh, cheating and chattering of, of the, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes I don't know if you were part of the conversation from the word call, but nevertheless, you just have to probably have a chance to relook at the conversation once again, then you will see how there are different alphas. Uh, so having said that, we've redefined it, I'm going to hand back over to Ms. Uber and Urev to do closing comments. And then Mama, please give us a much deliverables and then we're wrapping it up. Ms. Dube, you are first, go ahead. And if there's anyone who wants to say something, kindly raise your hand now. I don't want to close anyone out. Kindly raise your hand now so I can note you and give you a chance before I hand over back to Uma. She's gonna be the one who says the last word because she's the one who took the effort to go and prepare and battle it with herself and research and came and, and came prepared to share the sentiments with, with us. Right. So with that being said, Ms. Dube, Rev, if you want to say some closing thoughts, raise your hand and then I'm going to hand over back to her to wrap it up for us. I've asked you to unmute you, Ms. Dube. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dube. Oh, she's probably struggling with the party. All right, let's start with Rev. Rev, just wrap it up for us and cons. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, hi. No, oh, sorry, okay. sorry. I, yeah, I couldn't see that box. I couldn't see that oh. box at any. Okay, so. Anyway, um, I wanted to say that I, I love Umam the, the 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 definitions that she gave. Also, to to reiterate, which he, an alpha male and an alpha female are definitely not going to be the same. Yeah. Okay, don't mute yourself, please. I've asked you to mute. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right. So, Bengiti, um. Number one, I love Umang in the way that she, she put it. We, we are inherently 
also because of creation biologically different men and women. Therefore, um, our definition of an alpha male and their characteristics and, uh, and the definition of an alpha female and the characteristics might be the same in some places, but will not be the same totally, right? I, I wanna give an example. Um, lying sevens are corner at my workplace. I'm the only female in the company. The rest are men, right? And when you find me in my workspace, I'm an alpha female. I'm ambitious. I'm, I'm not a bully, but I, I had meetings and I, I, I get things done. You understand? I, I, I'm, I'm that person. The, some of the characteristics in an alpha female I have, and I, I, I use them when I'm at work. At work, but mang figure kaya, it's a whole different setup. So I, I kind of change, not change who I am, but I kind of know where to use my alpha femaleness characteristics and where not to use it. So it's we, we don't necessarily have to do away with the term. Like I said before, it's almost like feminism. We don't necessarily have to do away with the term, but we can redefine it to, to the way that it's supposed to be in the way that is understandable to us as Christians. Because like you said, Leander, in the beginning, Guti, whatever it is that we're talking about and discussing, right? So we are not mm -hmm. trying to, to, to make ourselves like, something different whatever it is like i said the genesis of the word alpha female was there to try and explain the characteristics of women of, a, of someone powerful i even in the comment section gave an example and says and say the the lady in proverbs 31 you know from verse 10, that lady is powerful read whatever the stuff that she was executing that's an alpha female right there but nowhere in the bible does it state that she was disrespectful to the husband nowhere in the bible does it say that she didn't do her wifely or, or, or motherly duties but it says that her, her children call her blessed and her husband is is honored and is known at the city gates because of her works so let's not get worried about the term alpha female. If it, if it affects you or worries you, then understand that it can be redefined in such a way that is understandable to us and is relevant to us as Christians. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Dubin. Just as I pick up from you, the title, the poll results, ne? no, 62%. The question is, does the term alpha female, because today we're talking about alpha female, a suitable fit for the Christian construct? No, 63%, yes, 37%. That's so far. I'll give the final, final as we close off. So clearly, we've dropped the word, we've agreed. I mean, I was waiting for her, as the, as the one who's in front of us, to say, we've dropped the word. But let's take something out of this conversation and move with it. Thank you for that comment, because it just ties in very well with the, with the results. Rev, I'm just going to give you a chance to just wrap it up for us, and then it's so a back to Uma to give us our deliverables and send us back. I've asked you on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, leadership. Uh, oh, yeah, so <laughs> uh, this is very, this, <laughs> this is very interesting. <laughs> Because it, it it keeps on bringing in uh, you know the various sides that may be very confusing and uh, my jaw is just dropping with one comment after another like okay 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 you know so uh, I think we should be fair uh, to the conversation to to kind of like wrap it up nicely and do yeah. say we will say we have um, we 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 may need to say that we have a new definition for the alpha uh, that we need to, we, we are contextualizing now, you know, to what we're speaking about, yeah, well, um, because uh, I'm still not changing. What I'm hearing is that, well, um, the, 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 you know, the, there's, a, there's now, they, they, they call it a morphed understanding, which I should, I, I think is a modernist, a view, modernist definition of what uh, an alpha female is. And also, I'm just having issues uh, listening to my precious, beautiful sister, Lana, 
uh, commenting about being the alpha female at work and she's the only one and like, okay, but how are you an alpha female when you're the only female? Because um, at the same time, my understanding of alpha, I think there's an alpha personality, right? There's an alpha male, which is really exclusive to, because when you say an alpha male, you're not just talking about an, uh, 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 everyone, you're talking about the male amongst males. And an alpha female, I believe should also be the alpha amongst the females, you know, the alpha female and the alpha male, because when we're talking about the alpha male, not, may, not women are affected by the alpha male, it is mostly other men, because they are the one having this, um, you know, um, this, this, this experience with this person, you, you know what I'm saying? So I think like we should be, we should be, I don't know how to call it, no, no, Miss Dube, don't be offended by me. I'm not coming at you. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just commenting. I'm just trying to, you know, yeah. But what a, I, I think at the end of the day, guys, let's, let's just agree to say that, look, um, we cannot take away, uh, we, we cannot take away uh, the fact that the, the, the understanding of the alpha has always been number one characteristic is dominance, you know? And I do not know if maybe we are overarching as well when we talk about alpha and when we think that we are alpha because we are successful, we're able to then uh, express ourselves in a way that can be heard and changes can be made based on what we have said. And then we feel we're alpha. Is successful being alpha? Like, because now then, it changes the whole definition. But of course, yes, let's rest with that. The definition is moved and we are now talking about being successful as a person because then that means you don't need anyone else around. You can be, you can decide that you are an alpha of your own world. You are a go-getter. You're going like after everything that you want. You know, there's no one who's going to stop you no matter what. And you are, you are going after what you want and this has got nothing to do with anybody else but you. So you are just like an alpha in your own world. You know, because now when we bring in other people, we cannot just define them according to what we like. And I think we should respect also definitions that are there and not try and say, well, my perspective of the definition will be different because it's just like that. No, the definition is just what it is, you know, and we should do justice with that. But of course, I appreciate the, the discussion has been very, like there's been fun, you know, <laughs> listening to it and having different views and I appreciate you, Miss Dube, and you, Zandile, and, and everybody else. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Mkonzi Siabong. And, and I think also just to add some spanner to the works there. Um, in your own world, yeah, and I want to be careful in how I'm calling this. In your own world, you are an alpha. That's fine. Having said that, you know, there is an element to a certain extent of the deprivation of others to be allowed through other people's lived experience to tap into a higher space. So by that I mean, the, um, let me paint a, a practical example of how I relate to this. I'm going to head over to my whatever. How I relate to this is, probably in the workspace, in the academic space, in our general life. There are those, and I think Ukuku wrote a post recently about this. You guys can resonate. He said, well, there are those who stand apart. There are those who are unique. There are those who've got the power, the power that we're talking about today. That power speaks to the fact that there are things that they've mastered in their life. Sometimes it beat them up to a pulp, such to a point whereby they pick themselves up and they say, you know what, I'll stand up and, and pick up the pieces and move on. Someone else can pick up something from someone else's experience. So Ubuntu can be an alpha in their own world, and there will be an element of a deprivation because when you say, I'm an alpha in my own world, so it means you don't want a portion for my experience. You don't want a, prof, a, a portion for my character. You don't want a portion from how I adapt, how I live, how I structure myself, how I pick the pieces up and move on. So having said that, essentially, good for you in your own world, stay in alpha. 
but there is an element of the deprivation, a loss of opportunity that could be read. Because if we were to approach this conversation with a mindset, non-preconceived ideas come and say, okay, I'm here to learn something new. And, and, and alphas were defined, okay, does it make sense? Okay, uh, my definition is lower. I can probably identify one or two or 10 people in my life who I can say, okay, this one fits there, that one fits there, that one fits there, that one fits there. And automatically that qualifies the definitions, okay? So having said that, where I'm going with this is, when you classify it as an alpha in your own world, let there be not also a regret later of the deprivation of an opportunity to get into the mind of someone else and see things as they see them. That is my comment. And speaking about Google's Nyoni's uh, comment was that when you are successful, I had some reservations about it, but I just want to touch it. When you are successful, he says, it's your success. It's not our success. So it's your success according to your own life. I had some reservations, okay? Because some of us are where we are because we're sitting at the feet of some people. And, and, and their success means a whole lot. However, but I'm just trying to articulate a point which is when, when you say, okay, stay the way you are, become powerful the way you are. We've dropped the word alpha, a secular. Become powerful the way you are, dominate the way you dominate, and intelligently use power the way you use it. Do it in your own world. Let's not lose out on an opportunity while you're still there. So I'm going to give Umlu, because he's one of ours, an exception. And once when I've made up my mind, I close. I'm going to make an exception to do a closing comment for us. He's one of the special people. But before I give to him, can I read a comment, a closing comment from Umpo on the page? Yeah? Because I think Uma, as she closes, she'll touch on this. And then just to put us, send us taking the uh, informed and equipped. So a comment from Paul is in response, I think, or maybe she was just continuing with the conversation. The comment says, or should I say Imam Paul? Or she was, she was really older than me. Mom Paul says, <clears throat> biblically married women are to be submissive and husbands be leaders. So in marriage context, how can we balance being alpha and non-alpha without being labeled as being non-submissive? That's a question. Okay, let me read it again. Or should I read it again? It's fine, okay. So she also con continues to say that awareness of being adaptive is the way to go, adaptive, adaptation, sitting and being taught. One can choose which to become depending on the circumstance. That is the closing comment. I'm going to give to Rev last exception, the exception, unique exception. And then Ma, after that, just close for us. Just unmute yourself and close for us. Go ahead, my king. <laughs> yeah, morning, 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 cons. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir, for the recognition. Yo, thank you. Uh, again, I think, uh, I know at the end of the day, um, we are learning. And it's very interesting uh, to, to, to see how we think. And um, I think 230 has been sort of like an academy of some sort. You've been learning a lot. And uh, it's quite humbling and exciting at the same time, having different definitions of this and that and learning. You know, it's, it's really beautiful. But I think at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is get the best versions of ourselves out there, you know, uh, to learn more that we should not be afraid of being assertive in the things that we want, you know, in getting ahead without fear of being called names. And there are others who feel like, no, I do not like it when someone calls me an alpha female or an alpha male. I think at the end of the day, you shouldn't really care what people call you when people think that you're an alpha. But I think when you function in your purpose and knowing where you are going and knowing that you're taking the right step going forward, you shouldn't have a problem with what people call you, you know, because uh, you are not shaped by what people say about you. If they say that you're an alpha and you're dominant, obviously we live in a world where uh, 
most of the times people will try and make you feel bad for being something that you are because it does not work in their favor you know um like in this case we sometimes may beat each other down and say but you're not being a submissive person you're not being a submissive woman only because maybe she says things that actually scare you as a man and you feel that maybe you are not even leading her anywhere and therefore her being so expressive will cause her to maybe find another path or find someone else and you end up saying look you're not being a submissive person and the question is what should she be submissive to you know so i think at the end of the day women also should not be afraid of occupying spaces they shouldn't be afraid of raising their voices and saying things that matter to them the way that they feel i think this is the kind of women that we want you know the the, the women that ozan is talking about the women that are sure about themselves you know who know what they want they may offend us here and there and i think that offense is good because we learn how to live with them and uh, you know i think for, for the for the most part us men have been so used to uh, defining women or good women as those women who will listen to a man. But when they do not listen, even with valid reasons, we find ourselves offended. So I think it's high time we actually, or everybody come to the table and we speak our minds and we speak what we think. In that way, we will grow and have real conversations because then we will then grow together. You know. So at the end of the day, guys, I appreciate everything that has been said. Women are powerful, we are all powerful, but mostly we can be powerful together. I do not think that we should view ourselves as a threat to one another. As long as our power is used and is harnessed to enrich and encourage each other to get to a better place, it can be used for good, you know, as opposed to uh, saying, no, she's my enemy, because I do understand, obviously, I, I, I'm a kind of man that will go for a woman who knows what she wants. I do not believe that I'll be in the same house with a woman that cannot challenge my thinking, a woman that will not challenge my plans. I need her to be strong, you know, because in that way, the best that can happen when we love each other or when we function together is that I can become powerful. Speaking to a friend of mine just recently, he's like, no, this woman is all that just powerful. I'm like, look, dude, having this kind of woman in your life will not make you less of a man. If anything, even if things do not work out at the end, because of the mindset that she has, she's a go-getter, she knows what she wants, she works hard, she thinks hard, she challenges you. She will only leave you sharpened as a better person. So we shouldn't fear being challenged. We can grow and become better people with the kind of women that we have in our lives. We should say it down with women who, who do not want to speak, who down their voices so that they can be viewed as the good women. There's nothing good about not saying what you feel in order for someone else to feel like you are a good person. I think we should, that, that's where we should start functioning now to say, okay, they are alpha, she's, she's going after everything she wants and that's good. And if anything, support her, support her, support her, support her, support her to the end. Yeah. Thank you so much for going to some constructive, powerful words there. Ma? Let it explain for us, please. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a lovely, engaging uh, discussion. Yeah. That's good for you. That's good. I, I think for me, whether we cancel the term or we don't, Mm -hmm. We still live in a world where the term yeah. is used. And, and I think what is, what is important for me is, is that we don't drop the characteristics, the beautiful characteristics of a strong woman as we drop the term. Mm -hmm. Because I think what, what's more concerning is the number of women that are downplaying their power justifiably because maybe the church does not embrace power displayed by women mm -hmm. as much as we would like it to. Maybe when somebody was authentic to the full extent of their power, they experienced a form of rejection and being sidelined and, and, and called names. It might not have been alpha, it might have been loud mouth or what or what. But my, 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 my desire today is that I manage to communicate that God created all of us 
and was intentional in making us different and gave certain powers. Other people have the power in silence. And I hope, because what when we're talking about power, we're just not talking about abilities. We're talking about something inherent in the human being. If you have it, it pushes you. It's, it's in the body. It's an energy that you have. Whether, whether we, 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 we don't like the research that was done, that, that you may have the influence, whether you are conscious or not, that when you are present in a conversation with friends, their feet tend to look towards you, whether you are aware or not. It is something that you have, that we begin to open our eyes and be aware so that we can be responsible about this power. Know when to use it, know when to tone it down. That's where adaptive and aware comes in. And, 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 that, and, and especially as parents, that when we observe that our children have these qualities, the tendency is to beat them and make them sit down. And when a child is given that kind of an energy, they will be unsettled in certain situations when they see there's no leadership here, they will want to take over because that, that power does not have an age limit. So as parents, we need to be able to be, to channel and encourage and nurture, especially in the girl children. And remember the topic had modernism. So in nowadays, we can no longer raise our children the way that we were raised to keep quiet and to, to be seen and not heard, all of those things. Our children have views. They need to be encouraged to express themselves. I liked Pastor Ketelo's presentation. It ended with giving teenagers space to give us feedback on our parenting. And this is how we nurture this power in them and they get it from home. And we, we start to teach them that it does nothing wrong with it. Um, thank you. I also like the Proverbs 31 women that were given as an example, as well as the Jezebel example. Both those women have power. And I think that we are shown the different types of alpha, female power that's available and whether one uses it for good. Uh, maybe Jezebel also used it for good for, he, for her people. It might not have been seen as good overall, but for, for, the, for the people that she was working with, she was very good. I thank you very much. I, I don't have anything better. Okay, Mama Siabulera, thank you so very much for lending that claim nicely for us we appreciate it maxa please when we delegate someone from the team and we identify that we, we are able, likely suited to be able to help us please please help us we need you so this ministry has been given to us by god and he has blessed it and through people like yourselves like even Ketel, you kept on referring a lot to him um they you know uh we are humble to host them on our platform. We are very much humble to host you guys on our platform. So the end result for the poll, no, the term alpha male, female. We are dropping the term, but we're not dropping the characteristics, we're not dropping the qualities and the ideal of the Proverbs 31 woman or the, the alpha, well, we're dropping the term after all. The element of being a person who knows what to do with power that we cannot take away. So the no was 60% and the yes, the fit, the way is fitting was 40%. So say I'm going to end the poll now. I've ended it. And then lastly, before we close, I'm going to ask uh, someone to please kindly close for us in prayer. And I'm hoping, Andrew, could you help us with praying for us, my leader? I would appreciate that. So I just want to share my screen with me to share something concerning tomorrow. Uh -huh. uh, and then we wrap it up. So tomorrow, Early in the morning, as you wake up, 
will be on Adventist World Radio, and we'll be talking about 2.30, who we are, what we do, how we came to be, 30 minutes of a conversation, and to spread the word far and wide. And clearly, I was telling Utah, which this year is the year of recognition and publicity and being known for beyond our norms. Like, we, we've got our own little circle. That's how I was saying, we can only write with a column, even though I've closed the platform, because he's our own circle. Your Van Hedens, your Tabby Sames, your Gladwells, and so on and so forth. But now God is like, hey, open more doors. So I was at Rosebank recently. I hammered 230 conversations. Soon probably we'll be getting calls from the SABC. Who knows? Who knows? Might end up being a fully fledged ministry that has a mini studio. Who knows? So we can impact lives. So we can be a direct place where people can connect with help. Because I think that's what God has entrusted to us. So don't forget that tomorrow. Uh, in the morning, I'm going to quickly just post the link for downloading the app so you can be able to access uh, that uh, broadcast or, or sharing or whatnot so that you can hear what, what are we all about and who are we and so on and so forth. So on the chat, I'll just share the link. And the, the post is also up on Facebook as well as the link to download the app. So please do the right thing. So with that being said, at this point, I thank you, Mars and Lela. See you soon. We'll be seeing you around. I'll be seeing you on my YouTube and Facebook Live. I'm like, oh, I know that lady. I know her, Mamalo. I know her. I've once spoken to her, and she knows who exactly I am. So soon we'll be seeing you around because obviously you're a person of ministry. You touch lives. That's what you do. So in closing, I'm going to ask you, Andy. Andy, could I ask you to please unmute and just close for us in prayer? Andrew Chin, I hope he's still here. I'm choosing him because he's a diplomat. Okay, look like he's not here. Let me ask for someone else to kindly close for us in prayer. All right, <laughs> Nicolette, you can't survive this one. I'm asking you to mute you, Nicolette, please. I was going to choose Natale, but let me choose. Please close for us, Nicolette, in prayer. Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone, please bow their heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Um, for those who are still celebrating Sabbath, we thank you for the Sabbath. And for those who have just completed a wonderful Sabbath day, Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much for all of the information that we gleaned today. The speaker was phenomenal. And as we continue to participate in these sessions, Lord, please speak to us. Let us know what it is that we should be focusing on. Um, we want to be great Christians, Lord. We want to uh, see you in the new earth made new. Uh, please accept my prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Nicolette. So at this point, I'm going to stop the live feed for the purpose of those who are on Facebook. We are going off Facebook because now we're having a internal, you know, meeting after scenes. You know, heart to heart, bash me, I bash you. What were you saying there? What were you trying to say, session? So we're going to have an after scenes. I'm going to quickly stop the live feed. Okay.